this video, I'm going to show you how to build a house rental website, just like Airbnb. So let me show you guys around. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just open up the terminal so I can create our Rails app. All right, and because I'm on WSL, I always have to start my Redis server. Now we're good to go. If I was to do Redis CLI, I say ping, it says Pong, which means Redis is set up. And we need Redis for things like uh, action, broadcasting, and background jobs, things like that. So now I'm going to create the our Rails app. To do that, I'll just type in Rails new. And I'll put in the name of the app. Which is going to be Airbnb Rails. Then I'm going to set a few options, which would be dash D to set the database to use PostgreSQL. I'm also going to set the CSS framework to use Tailwind, just so everything looks a little bit nicer out of the box. So with those options set, I'm going to press enter and then this will generate our simple Rails app. Now that the app is generated, we can see into this folder and just start the server by typing in bin slash dev. Now that the server is starting, we can view our app if we open up the browser and go to localhost colon 3000. Now we'll see this little error if you didn't create the database. Uh, so it's just saying that we need to create the database. So I'll just click that button and it'll create the database. And now we'll see that uh, the Rails logo is right here, which means that our app is set up, Rails is working, and we're ready to start coding. So I'm going to create a simple model so we can view something inside of our app right away. And then I'll add user accounts in a second. I just want something simple right now. So I'm going to do a scaffold by typing in Rails G scaffold. And we're going to create a listing model. And a listing will have a title an address of the listing and then let's also give it a description which can be typed rich text rich text is like a built-in advanced text editor so you can add cool things like embedded images and other things like that and speaking of images why don't we add images and then i'll put that as type attachments although we could always have added these in later it's a very small change so i think with this title address description and images that's probably all we need for a simple setup. So I'll just run this generator. We're also going to need to run Rails Action Text colon install to add the migrations for Action Text and Active Storage. And then the last thing we'll do is migrate the database by running Rails DB Migrate. So now our database is migrated and we have all these fields in our table. So we can just go ahead and start the server with bin slash dev. And then if we go back into uh, the browser, We'll see that nothing has changed yet, but if we go to slash listings, we'll see this listings page, and that was generated by the scaffold. So when you do a scaffold, it generates the views for you, which means like you have this URL listings, and then you can also create new listings. You get all of this just from typing in that scaffold, and you can do that for anything. So let's go ahead and create our first listing. So I think the title might be, like, honestly, let's go to Airbnb and try to find uh like one of their houses and then we'll see like why I did it like this. Uh, let's just do uh, OMG. Yeah, how about that? This one in Austin, Texas, it says East Side Beehive or no, it says Tiny Home in Austin, Texas. So that would be our title. The address, they don't really show the address for people, uh, but let's just I don't even know. We can go up on Google Maps and try to like find a random address that we think would be like probably like over here. Let's just try to take one of these addresses. If I can try to, here we go. I'll just copy that address, and then obviously they don't show that to people because they don't want them to know where it is until they book the reservation. And then we can take the description would be like whatever they show right here which is actually a pretty big description. I'm just gonna take the top part. And then for images, it would be all of the photos. So we probably can download these images. Uh, I mean, it, it goes as a WebP, that's fine. We're gonna have some images to work with for our Airbnb app. I kind of like how they fit all the images into like this certain template. It looks cool. All right, I don't want to take too many images, but you get the idea. We have some images to show. Now, if I went to my downloads, 
I could just select these and drop it into that field and it shows we have seven files and we can create the listing and just like that we have such a simple app but like this is the start of all great apps like this is something this is pretty cool so right off the bat we have this listing section where we can create it and then uh, we can just get started on making it look a little bit better maybe like making it look similar to this type of setup so let's just do some UI updates. So actually the first thing I want to do is set the root so that it's when we go to our main uh, URL route, like when we go to localhost, this would be the, in production, it would be like the main, it would be the name of your domain. You know, it's a root URL. I want to set that to go to the listings page. So to do that, let's first open up the code in VS code. And then I'll come here, go to the config folder, the routes.rb. And I'm going to need to add a root. So you'll see down at the bottom, we have this root section commented out. So I can uncomment it. And then we don't have a post controller or anything. So that's what it would be looking for. So instead, we can use listings. So we'll change it to route to the listings index action. Now, when we go back into our browser, we reload we'll see that the listings show up as the main page on our site. This is exciting. We already have this full setup and just as easy as running that scaffold command. So now I wanna make this look a little bit better. Like the first thing we might wanna do is update the listings page so that this looks nicer so we don't just see like all this content right here on the listing page. So to do that, we can come into our app, into the code, and then go over to the app folder, the views and the listings, and then just come in here to the index file and we can see what's happening. So inside of the, the index file, we're rendering all the listings right here. And then we're saying render listing. So we're, we're looping over the listings, the collection of listings that we have, which this variable is defined in the listings controller on this index action we're setting at listings equal to listing.all, which is how you get all of the listings. And then inside of the index, we're just looping over them with some Ruby code. And then we're rendering a partial and we're also showing a link to show the listing. So this listing partial just basically contains all of the content about your listing. And this was generated by the scaffold. You don't need to use it. You don't need to design your app like this. It's actually better not to. So I can just straight up delete that and then let's make our own partial. So I'll render like, let's just say listing card and I'll pass in listing as listing. Now this is gonna look for a partial in the same folder called listing card. So we're gonna create that file. So what I when I said partial, I meant it's a file that starts with an underscore and it allows you to render it in different files just like this. So we can create the file by typing underscore listing card and then dot html to erb, which is the type of uh, like extension that we're using to use Ruby and HTML at the same time. And inside of the listing card, we can start styling that card. Let's say like width full and I don't really want to get into any specifics too much, but I just want to render the listing dot title and then probably listing images first but we'll check if we need to make sure that there's a listing image so if there we'll say if listing images dot any then we're going to render an image tag for the first one and we can take a look at what that looks like if we reload now we see this, the image is actually really huge. So I wanna resize that with some CSS. And because I'm using Tailwind, it allows me to just add some CSS classes right onto the page. I don't need to use a CSS file. But you guys can choose any CSS framework that you want if you wanna use Bootstrap, Tailwind, or if you just wanna write the CSS in your own CSS file. So I'm just gonna put a height that works for me, like a width. The thing about Tailwind, you have to remember all of the different like sizing ratios, but you don't have to. You can also put brackets and then put any size, like 300 pixels. 
and I kind of like doing that too. And it's just a quicker way to style, but it's basically like doing inline styling. So if you're not using Tailwind, you could also just said like style with 300 pixels. And this would do the same thing. But we don't have to worry about that because we have this a whole CSS framework to do this. It's, it's cool. All right, so now this looks honestly like a little bit better. We have the title. One thing is that I think the title was on the bottom here. So it's like image first and then title at the bottom. So we can just go ahead and move the title down. I'll probably put this inside of some sort of element. I just use a P element. You know, the, I don't really know what um, element you're supposed to use. Put it at the bottom. And it looks like on Airbnb, they kind of bold it. So we could do that too by typing font bold. Ooh, that looks pretty good. And then also the images are rounded. I like the roundedness on it. So if we want to round our images too, we can just add that class to the image tag. Say rounded large, overflow hidden. Now we're going to get that nice rounded look. And then right now it's not working as a as a link like we want it to. Like on Airbnb, if you click anywhere on this element, it'll just bring you to that listing. So to turn this into a link, we can just wrap this whole div in a link to. Just do a link to listing. And then we have to add a block, which means you say do. And then with every block, you have to have an end. So it just connects the do to the end. And then all of the content inside of it will get put inside of our link. And what that looks like is if we reload, now you get that nice cursor effect. And when you click, you actually go to the listing. So already, I mean, this looks just like Airbnb, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> so yeah, let's go to, let's go get another house just so we can see what that looks like. Let's get this little cabin one. Entire cabin. And let's grab our description. The address, I'm going to need another address. Maybe this one's a little bit farther. Obviously, this isn't the address, but it just works for a nice demo in our app. And then as far as images go, well, let's download some of these images so we can use them. So we're just like download, download, download. And I'm going to put in those images. select these drag them over create listing and if we go back to listings oh now we see something weird like it's not in the same styling as the Airbnb site where they line them up in like they do like four different listings on each line but on our app it's just like looking like they're on they're stacked on top of each other so to fix that we can go back to the index and what we can do is on this listings div element that's wrapping all of our listings we can start styling that so we just say width full and then actually we're gonna use grid so grid is a CSS uh, like it's a CSS uh, it's a part of CSS that allows you to style elements into a grid so if we add the class grid and then we give it the amount of columns so for Airbnb they do four columns and then we can even add gap to space them out and if we go and reload, we'll see this already looks amazing. We have our setup. It looks pretty similar, although their pictures are like more square-like. If we wanted to make them square-like, we can. Although I don't really mind it. But if you just add a matching height and the width, then it would be square-like already. Just like this. Although you notice that our images get stretched out and it looks kind of ugly. So to fix that, we can add object cover which means it won't stretch the image, but it'll actually just like crop it to, to zoom into the center. And then if you wanted to change which position it zooms into, you could say like objects top, I'm pretty sure, or objects left. Yeah, see how it, now it's zooming in on the left side. But if you leave it by default, it'll zoom into the center, which 
I'm pretty sure is how Airbnb does it. So yeah, we have these listings. I don't really like the squareness. Maybe it's too big. We can change it to like 250 pixels. Mm, I don't know. I kind of liked the other look. Maybe we'll do just width full and then height, like a certain height. So I'm going away from the, the pixels. So now it's like height 64. Oh, and then now you, you'll see when we go on mobile, it looks really bad. So actually we want to add a breakpoint back on the index. So right now it's always going to try to stick it into four columns. But if we add a breakpoint like this, we say medium, it'll switch to four columns. Then on mobile, it'll do the default with our grid, which is just one on each line. Also, we need to add some spacing between these top links. So to do that, you can just simply add a BR, which is the HTML element that adds a little break in the content. And that already looks pretty good. So just like that, we have a simple, very simple Airbnb type of app. We can look at the listings. Although now the listing page doesn't look very, it doesn't look as pretty as the front page because the front page looks really pretty. All right, guys, so let's get working on making this show page look more like this uh, Airbnb actual setup. All right, so let's get started. So to do that, let's just come back into our code. We're gonna go over to the app in the views folder, the listings show. So the show page is where uh, you're gonna show that listing. And it's just because of how the routes are set up. So you're going to slash listing slash this post up here, we have the ID. So actually that might be something that we wanna change real quick. Instead of using an ID, we can actually use like a readable type of thing. Although Airbnb, Airbnb actually uses an ID, look. But we don't have to be just like them. We can make ours a little bit nicer. Although, I guess it's not really a big deal. But just to make it so it's not like two in the URL, we could at least add some sort of, uh, what they call it is a slug. And there's actually libraries to add slugs. There's a library called friendly ID. And we can use that for adding a slug. Although it is failing, but it's used by a ton of people, used by 36,000 different people, which is crazy. So let's just go ahead and add this in. You can do that by going over to the gem file, adding in friendly ID just anywhere in here. And then we can do bundle install. So come into the console, run a bundle install. Now we have that gem added. And then we also need to add a migration field. So if you look over here, we need to do a migration slug unique. So to do that, we're gonna do it on the listing model. Let's do a Rails G migration, add slug to listings. And we'll say slug unique, just like that. And the cool thing about Rails is when you do a migration and you have the right naming convention, which means like the last thing basically needs to be the table name. I think I'm not really even sure how it, how it works, but if you say like adds whatever to this table, it actually does that for you. So if we looked at the inside of the migration file that we got generated, it actually creates this migration where it's adding a column to the listings, slug type string, and it's also adding an index and it has to be unique. So that looks good to me. You can just migrate the database with world db migrate. And if you do need to change that before you migrate it, you can go over to the db folder, the migrate, and then look for the latest file. And this is your migration right here. We could change this if we needed to, but that looks good to me. And I guess the next thing you have to do is generate the configuration file. So I guess we have to run this rails generate friendly ID. And it also adds a migration table for friendly ID slugs. And then we could just migrate the database like this. All right, and it says edit the, the model file as the following. So we have to add an extend and we also have to set up the friendly ID. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll copy this code and then we'll go over to inside of the app folder, the models folder. And you'll see that we have this listing.rb model and it already has some attributes. Like it has the rich text and it has the 
images attribute. So these are using those libraries that are built into Rails, but we did have to run an installer to use them. So what I'm gonna do is right after that code, I can just extend friendly ID. Actually, a lot of times I like to have my extends, like whenever I use the extend keyword, I like to put it at the very top just to keep it nice and organized. And I might even wanna have the friendly ID on top of the has many associations. So we have friendly ID name. So that's the attribute it's gonna use. And I don't think we use name, I think we use title. We could have used name. Let me go and check in our app, what did I call it? Yeah, look, we called it title. So actually we're gonna use title, use slugs. So just like that. And then uh, we also have to edit inside of the controller. So instead of just a regular find, we have to do a friendly find. So to do that, we're gonna go into the app controllers, listings controller, go over to, well, actually it's not inside of the show action, it's inside of a before action. Up here, we have a set listing before action. So that means it's gonna be all the way at the bottom of the file. We have this method called set listing, where we're setting listing uh, to this listing dot find. So instead of doing dot find, we have to do dot friendly dot find, which will use the slug instead of just searching for the ID. And just like that, we have that nice setup. Although since we already created those tables before, we actually need to run this callback, find each and save, so that it can set the slug. Because if we look right now, our models that we already created, like those listings that we already created, don't have a slug attribute set. So we can check that out by going to the Rails console, type Rails C in your terminal. Now we're in the Rails console, and in the Rails console, you can interact with all of your different models and objects inside your app. So if we were to check listing.count, we'll see how many listings we have. We have two listings, and if we did listing.last, you'll see all the attributes on the listing. We have the ID, title, address, and then slug, but the slug is set to nil. Also, the reason why you don't see, you don't see images, you don't see the description, is because those are not really included directly on the model. Since we're using those libraries, action text, it has its own table. So we actually just need to call description and it would pull up, but it just doesn't show it as one of the attributes actually on our database table or on the model. All right, so what we have to do though to get the slugs to get generated is we just need to run this callback, the save callback, which usually gets ran whenever you save. So like when you update or when you create a new listing, but since we already had created them, we just need to run that callback again by doing find each and save, just like this, run it. And now you see that our listings got updated. Now, if we check our listing.last, the slug looks like this, entire dash cabin, and like it looks better and that's what it'll look like in the URL too. So let's restart the server and take a look at this. So if we go back to you know, our main page, localhost, and now we click on the listing, you'll see that up in the URL, it has a like a prettier URL that actually uses the title. And it'll take care of, if there's like somebody else has a tiny home in Austin, Texas, it'll take care of that because it already has to be unique. So it would just add like a few numbers at the end. And that's perfectly fine with me. All right, so now that we have the slugs worked out, we have a pretty. All right, let's get started on updating the listing show page to look more like the Airbnb page. So to do that, we're gonna go into the code and then go to the app folder, views, listings, and then the show html.erb file. And then inside of here, we can, I mean, really we can just delete this whole file and start again uh, because like the things that they do have, they have the link to edit the listing, back to listings. But we're probably gonna just rewrite this anyways. So yeah, I would just delete everything and then just start from scratch. So we can start with a div. Or you know what, let's just start. I was gonna put a container around everything, but let's start with the images. So what we're gonna wanna do it to display all the images, we're going to access the images like this off of the listing. So we say at listing.images, each do image, and then we'll end off the loop here 
And then inside of here, we're going to do an image tag for the image, just like that. And if we go back in the browser, we'll see that all of our images are displayed on the page. Although they're kind of like just put side by side next to each other. And also they're really huge. So to fix that, we can add some styling. Let's add a class. Let's just give it a fixed uh, width. So we'll do width 40, that'll be pretty small. Now we have all the images. They're still right next to each other though. So I don't really know how we're gonna wanna display it, but we can put a container around them. And we can at least add some gap between them. So I'll just do flex gap four. And then you'll see that there'll be a little bit of spacing between them. If we wanted to have more, we could just increase the gap to a higher number. And we can also increase the size of the images. So something like this, we have all the images, although some of them are kind of wrapping over. So to fix that, we might want to do uh, overflow wrap. Or no, not overflow, it's actually flex wrap. Which means if they are gonna overflow, it'll just wrap them instead. Because by default with flex, it wants to just keep it in that straight line. But if you do flex wrap, it'll, it means that it'll change so that it can actually wrap over onto the next section. So this is pretty cool, but actually on the Airbnb website, I think they only display a certain amount of pictures up front. See, they have like this one, then they have the rest of them, and then they have show all photos. So if we wanted to make something that looks just like this, we can accomplish that by adding some more logic. So let's say like the first image is gonna be big and then the second ones are gonna be smaller. We can actually do something like that. If we just have our first image right here, we do image tag for at listing.images.first. And then let's say we wanna do width 64, height 64. I think that might be a little bit too small. So we come back. Now you see on the left, this one's like a little bit bigger, but we probably wanna do width 80, height 80, just to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna make these other images fit inside. And also we're not gonna display all of them. We can just display the first four and then have the link to show all photos. So to do that, well, first I'm gonna add some spacing between these. So I think I'll wrap it in another div. We can do flex gap eight and we'll have that one image and then we'll have another container which is the one right here where we display the rest of them so we actually just want to get listing images one through four i think something like that will work so yeah we got four images right here and then instead of flex we can do grid uh, grid calls two so two columns which means there should be two on each line and already we get this nice kind of setup Although now we can decrease the gap, put it on four. And then we need to kind of think of the sizing to figure out how we can get them to fit into like the right area. So instead of doing width 64, we're gonna actually have to think about this in terms of height. So we might be able to do height 36. And then look, that already kind of like, there's a little bit of space at the bottom, but it almost is perfect. So we could even increase the gap a little bit and maybe that'll push it down a little bit. It's still like a tiny bit of space, maybe gap eight. And you know what, gap eight, it seems like perfect. All right, and then to center all of this in the middle, let's just add an MX auto to the top div, which should push it in the middle. And then boom, just like that, we have this setup. Now also you'll notice we have some rounding on this div. So actually to achieve that effect, I think we can just add rounding to the top level div and then just do an overflow hidden. So if we come back to our app. Now you'll see we get that same rounding effect and I'm pretty happy with this. And then that, if we wanna show the rest of the images, let's see how they do that. When you press show images, they kind of bring you to like, I don't know if they bring you to a new page or it just pops up to show all the images. It looks like it just kind of pops up on top uh, because they're probably using some sort of JavaScript library where you know, they don't actually change the page. But for us, we could really decide how we wanna do that, but let's add in that show all images link. So to do that, I'm going to 
put relative on the top div and then that'll allow us to have a link to show all photos. Right now I'm just gonna put in this hashtag which is kind of just like a filler link so we're not actually going anywhere yet until I define that route. Then I'm gonna do an absolute, bottom zero, right zero. So what this is gonna do is gonna say absolute but since we have the relative class here, it's only gonna go on top of all of the content in this div. And then bottom zero, right zero is gonna put it in the bottom right corner just like this. If we reload, we'll show you we have this link, show all photos. Although we can do some nice styling like we have here. So to do that, let's add like BG white. And we can do the rounded. And also we can increase these numbers to like push it off of the side a little bit. And if we reload, uh, we see we have something like this, which you know what, that doesn't look too bad. We might be able to do some padding. Something like that. And then yeah, this looks good to me. We can show all photos. Right now it's not going anywhere. So we either need to define, we need to add some JavaScript, like a pop-up that shows all of the images, or we could just have a page for that. So I think I'll just add a new page for that. And to do that, I'm going to add a new route. So we have this resources listings in here. I'm gonna do a resources listing stew, and I'm gonna define a new route. So we can do get images, or actually let's just call it photos, since that's what we're calling it. Photos. And then we can say to listings, hashtag photos, hashtag or pound sign, whatever you want to call it. And then that means we'd have a new action inside the listings controller. We could make a full new controller called like photos controller where we list all the photos. That's actually like a more organized way to do it. Or we could just have a new method inside of here that photos where we actually can go and view all those photos. And then we also have to add on member so this means it's going to be defined as a new route that uses the id that we are passing in and now that we have this we can actually go and change this url inside of the show page to a listing photos path and then pass in at listing and then let's go and reload and make sure that that works so actually we're getting undefined method listing photos path I think maybe you have to do photos first, photos underscore listing path. Yep, just like that. And then we click here. Uh, it's missing the template actually, but if we went and defined that, then this would work. So defined, to define the photos template, go to the listings folder, create a new file called photos.html.erb. Note that this isn't a partial, like the other files we we're creating. This is actually a full template, which means it's a full page that we're going to render and then inside of here you can just simply loop over and say listing images each do just like we had before and then display all of these images with the image tag image and if we go reload oh uh, we're actually seeing this undefined method images for nil so the reason being is we added a new route on the listings controller but we're not running the set listing method, that callback, that before action callback. So to do that, we need to go up to the top of this listings controller and you'll see that we're doing set listing, but only for these different actions that we set inside of here. So to add our photos method, we just add it like that. And then we reload and boom, it's looking, I mean, <laughs> we need to change the styling, but we are seeing all the images, which is cool. So if we go back to that photos template, Let's add some CSS for these images to make them a little bit smaller. So I'm adding a width. Whoa, okay, that looks crazy. Oh, you see why? Because I actually did the equal sign. So we're displaying uh, like all of, we're displaying some stuff that we don't wanna display. So let's delete the equal sign, reload. All right, this looks a lot better, just side by side. Now to add more of that styling like we had before, we can just wrap this in a div. I think I'll do like grid, grid calls four, gap four. So we can have maybe four images and then something like this. I don't know. I don't really know how we want to style it. Maybe we can make the sizing bigger. Cause this is the page where you're supposed to see them in better detail kind of. But we could also define a new route where we can click in on the image. 
All right, and you'll notice that actually this image is a little bit bigger than the other ones. I'm not sure why, but to fix that, we can just add a fixed height. Let's say like the height is 64, and then let's do object cover. So we can fit the image inside of that section. And yeah, this looks a little bit better. We have all of our uh, different photos or images displayed here. And then even if you look at the route too, it looks pretty nice because we just have listings. We still have that name in the URL and then we have slash photos. This is like easy enough that somebody could share this, which actually makes it better than show all photos because I don't think you can just show like display these photos. Maybe you can. Probably something up here in the URL. I think probably like this part. Let's try to delete that. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to really test, but what I do know is that this is looking pretty awesome. We already have this much. And then what I want to do is up at the top, let's add a link back to the listing. So if you want to go back and display like, and go back to the listing, you can just add a link to back to listing. And then this will go to the listing path, passing listing. Actually, because we have just this listing path, you don't even need to do it like that. You can just say link to at listing. That's a shorthand and that'll also work. All right, so, so to fix this so that this link isn't on the side, but it's actually on the top and we can also style that link a little bit better. Let's go in here and let's go to wait, the photos page and I'm gonna wrap this, all of the content inside of a div, which would be flex, flex call, which would make all of the items stack on top of each other. Now, the reason why we need to do this is because inside of our layouts application, by default, the Tailwind setup for Rails adds this main class around all of our content because see it's wrapping the yield. So yield is where all of our pages get rendered. So if we wanted to, we could delete this, but then we'd have to change some of the styling around the app just to center the parts that we do want. So I think I'll just leave it for now and then we might wanna change that later. So now when we reload, with our new flex flex call setup on the photos page, we can actually see our link at the top. And then if we want to style that a little bit nicer, we can go back to the photos page. And what I'll do is I'll add a BR tag between the link and then the content. So there's a little bit of space now, if you see. And then if we wanted to make this a bit better, we could do a carrot, we could try that. It's like back to listings. I've seen that in some places. Yeah, you know, that's not bad. All right, so we can show all photos. Then we can go back to listing if we want. We can also style that, maybe add some, like a background around it. Let's try a BG gray 100, rounded large, and then a border. Maybe a dark border. We'll see how that looks. Ooh. <laughs> so actually, it looks like this whole link is like stretching out. To fix that, let me do margin right auto and then let me do padding too so that the padding is just to like add some space in between so it doesn't look so small and then we have something like this uh, let's delete the carrot i'm not really liking that back to listing you know this is not bad but there's definitely some refactoring we could do like i don't know it's not bad for now though back to listing and now we have all of our images still like this looks really nice i'm really happy with the design i did here and then underneath, let's display like the title, description, and all that detail. So what I'll do is go back to the show page. And I'm going to, actually outside of this div, I'm going to add an H1. Inside the H1, I'll display the listing.title. Now using an H1 is actually kind of important because uh, this will help your app show up. This will help like the pages on your app show up in Google search results. Because when Google goes and looks at your website, it'll look for all the H1s and that helps it index your site so you can show up in searches. So putting this in the right in the correct tag is actually pretty important. And I'll just make it pretty big, text 5XL, or maybe a little bit smaller. And also you'll see that it is getting like put side by side and it's still because of that flex class that we have on the application. So I could either delete this or just add a flex call div to this page. Did this flex flex call. Wrap everything. Now this looks a little bit better. Although it looks like 
The MX Auto is not taking effect anymore to center the items, which is kind of annoying. And yeah, I do want to center the items. So what we could try is do item center. That's a class that gets added with by using the flex class. But it looks like still this div isn't going to the center. So one way to debug this is we can add a background color onto that div to see like what it's doing. And it looks like it's just here. It looks fine, but for some reason it doesn't want to go in the center, even though we have MX Auto. That's kind of annoying. I don't know why. Hmm. Why it doesn't want to go into the center. Okay. Because if we do item center, I just saw that that div's not going in the center either, even though this text is. Oh, I think I know why. So we have to do with full on this element. There we go. Now it looks a little bit better. We don't need to do item center. Although when we don't, we'll notice that our link gets sent all the way over here. So the problem is I want it to be like right underneath the images and fit in the same kind of size. So to do that, we need to add some sort of width on either this top element or just the images. I think let's do on the top element. Let's do a max width 5XL. And then you still want to have the width full so that it'll automatically fill that width. And what I'll do is I'll change the background so that it is on the div just so I can see how much space it's taking. And see, it's taking up a little bit too much space. So maybe 4XL. Still a little bit too much. We try 3XL. And I mean, that's fine. I guess that's fine for now. And then we can always figure this out later. So once we have the 3XL, let's actually add this MX Auto class. We don't need it on that element anymore, but we can put it on the top level element. And now we'll see what's centered. And we can remove that green background color. And then we have something that looks like this, where we still have everything that kind of looks nice. And then we have the title right there. You can also add BRs to add spacing between them. And I might even want to do like a font bold either bold or semi bold on the title to make it stick out a little bit. Probably more like a semi bold. All right, so like that. I think there isn't a space between semi bold. Or there isn't a, one of those dashes. All right, so like this, we have entire cabin in Concord, Texas. And then right underneath is where I'll put the description. So I'll just go ahead and render out that description should already be styled with that description styling. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Yeah, I think this is good for like the first little setup. Oh, we might also wanna add a link back to all the listings at the top or something. So to do that on the show page, we can just add it right above the images. I have like a link to back to all listings. And then this will go to the listings path, which is the path for the, all of those listings. So see back to all listings. All right, that looks good. We can also add another BR. So a break between this link and the images. Now, if we wanna make it have the same styling as this back button, which I think you usually do when you, like you wanna make your site look pretty consistent. So I'll just copy that styling from the other link and then we have this nice setup. Yeah, I think this looks really good. Then we can go back view all the listings. We're inside of here. We're looking at this listing. We can show the photos. And yeah, this has a pretty nice setup already. So from here, we might add like more information about the listing like they have inside of Airbnb. Stuff like how many guests it'll have, how much, like how many bedrooms, bathrooms, all that stuff. And also like information about the host. And then of course, booking the reservation actually it looks like on airbnb you have to get the app to book but on our website we don't even have to add like that but i'm definitely going to add the app too just because i feel like that'll be nice all right so i want to go ahead and start adding more fields onto our listing model but first of all since i deleted all the links now i can't find the link to edit this listing so i'm going to go ahead and add that in I come back here in the code and then go to the listing show page 
I'll just add it up here to the top next to the back to all listing. So what I'll do is I'll add a div around these and I'll use flex justify between so that the back button is on the left and then our edit link can be all the way on the right. I feel like that'll look pretty good. And then one thing we want to do is, well, we don't even have users set up yet. We don't have user accounts, but we'd want to only show the edit link to the user that posted the Airbnb or possibly like an admin. But since we don't have users right now, since I didn't add that in, uh, it really doesn't matter. You can have a link edit listing, which is going to go to edit listing path. Then we're going to pass in the listing. And as far as CSS, I don't even think we need like too much CSS. Let's just see what this looks like. All right, so this looks good, although I want this to be more centered. So to center that, we can add item center onto this container that's wrapping the two links. Just like that, we have this nice little setup. We can go to the edit page. And then inside of here is where I'm gonna start adding more fields. So to do that, first we need to have a migration file that we add to the database to support our new fields. But really we could start, we could choose where we wanna go. Do we wanna add the migration first or do we wanna add the UI? I think I wanna add the migration just so we can get that out of the way. So to add our migration, I'm gonna go into the console. I can, we can stop the server or we can leave it running and do it in a new tab, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna do a RailsG migration add house info fields to listings. And house info really is just the name I'm gonna use, but the most important part is that we're saying two listings. And then we can do a space and we can add all of our fields that we actually wanna add. So I wanna add bedrooms, which will be an integer, because there will always be a certain amount of bedrooms, you know, like two bedrooms, three bedrooms, however many bedrooms. And then we can do uh, bathrooms, which also is an integer because we're not gonna do like two and a half bed, even though they do that when you're selling houses. For Airbnb, you know, I don't think we wanna do that. Although if we did, then we could use decimal. If we wanted to have like 1.5 bathrooms, but I don't wanna do that. I think it makes more sense to just have integers. So we can have bedrooms, bathrooms. Uh, hmm. What else? How about like fits, like fits, uh, how about limit, like, people limit? I don't really know what else they call it. <laughs> Integer, so like you can say how many people, it fits up to this many people. And then anything over, you know, that would basically be against the rules. So let's just leave it at that. We have bathrooms, bedrooms, and then people limit. So we're gonna run that migration. And then if we want to look at that migration and see what it generated, we can do a cat on the file. And you'll see it's adding these columns, bedrooms, bathrooms, people limit. So that looks perfect. You can migrate the database. If that doesn't look right, then <laughs> just make sure that you were looking, make sure you're doing this right and you wrote the migration in a way that it's like adding something to the listings, to like the model. Because Rails uses that in the name to somehow uh, do this sort of generation. It's pretty cool, but it also can be confusing as a beginner. So I understand that. Now I'm gonna restart the server and reload. We don't see anything changing on the form. So that's where we have to go and update the UI. So we're gonna come into the code and then go over to the listings form partial. And inside of here, we just need to add those fields somewhere. So possibly at the bottom or possibly like up here, I don't know. What I'm gonna do is, since I wanna have the same styling as the other links, I'm just gonna copy one of these divs that has like the link and then let's just put it down here and we'll get started with bedrooms. So what I'll do is I'll just change this label and text field, the name of it from address to just bedrooms. And then we're also going to do, instead of a text field, it should be a number field. Just like that. And then we have bedrooms. If we came back here, we'll see we have bedrooms and then there's even like this nice built-in UI to select the bedrooms. Now, one thing to note is that you can go negative, which we don't want to allow. So to change that, uh, it's really just changing the HTML on the number fields. We can add a min, and also possibly we can add a max, although there's really, you know, I feel like you could have unlimited bedrooms. But we can do min zero, which means it is not able to go under zero. 
See, if you try to click, it won't let you. I feel like that looks pretty good. So now we have bedrooms. I'm going to add, I'm going to really copy this, paste it, and then this is already set up. All I have to do is change the name from bedrooms to bathrooms. And now we have another field for bathrooms right here. So bedrooms, bathrooms, and then really since this is just a number, we don't really need it to take like this much space, right? This seems kind of wasteful in terms of UI. So what I want to do is I want to just wrap these two things in a div. We do a grid, grid calls three, gap eight. And then also, oh, I meant to do the div on top of the bedrooms. And then MY, see MY is gonna add a ton of margin. Let's not do that. It's not important anymore. We can add, let's actually add MY to this top level div. So the same MY, I guess that's fine to add spacing. And if we reload, we'll see something more like this, which I think looks a lot better. And even when you resize, it still looks good. So you can put the amount of bedrooms and bathrooms. And then there's enough space for the people limit. So we wanna add that. And just copy another one of these. I'm gonna put this on people limit, which I think it sounds kind of stupid. Maybe we want to add some text here too. So to add custom text, we can do uh, a second parameter and just set whatever the title of the label we want to be. So you can say like people limit and do a parentheses and say like suggested is one per bedroom or something like that. Although that's kind of, it's kind of big. So we might want to do even more styling than that, which is possible if we just deleted this and then we added maybe like a span. And then since we have some, a span element, we can actually make it be like text small, so it's a little bit smaller. We can say suggested is one per bedroom and three per bathroom, something, I don't know. I guess the bathroom part doesn't really matter. <laughs> suggested is one per bedroom. See something like that? Hey, that, that looks pretty good to me. So we have bedrooms, bathrooms, people limit, which we have the suggestion, although really if you wanna do two people per bedroom, you can do it, you know? We're not stopping you. So the last thing we wanna do is uh, we need to update the controller. Cause right now, if we try to save this, we went to update. Well, first of all, the images actually break. Ooh, that's not good. It looks like it's trying to go to the listing show page, but now there's no images to, to display. So actually we probably wanna do a condition around this whole block and say if listing.images.any, just to prevent that error. So we're not gonna display that whole image section unless there's any. But another thing to notice is that right now these fields at the bottom aren't getting saved because we're not passing them in. If we go back to edit listing, see they're not saved. Uh, it's just not getting filled out. So what we have to do is we have to update the controller. It's really a tiny change. Just go into the code, go to the controllers, listings controller. And then all the way at the bottom, we have this listing params method, which this is what we're using inside of the update action. We're saying listing.update listing params. And then also when we create it, we're using listing params. And the reason being is that, well, there's this comment. It says only allowed list of trusted parameters. So this makes it so that just in case a user tries to almost like hack the page, like let's say they try to, because you can really do that. You can inspect element, you can inject your own HTML in to the site and then try to like update your user account with all these different parameters. And you can figure out the parameters too by like going into network and just doing all this like hacker kind of coder stuff. That's why we do listing params so that you're only permitting certain parameters that you want the user to be able to change and they're not gonna be able to hack anything. Like let's say if there was a admin parameter on the user, they're not gonna be able to just send admin true to try to update their account to an admin. You know, that would be really bad. That's why we do secure params because we're keeping our site secure. But anyways, we need to permit those new attributes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And now I think what you wanna do is you wanna put your parameters before your collection parameters before the array. I don't know if this is actually needed, but I feel like I remember this from 
a long time ago because yeah because see how this is a key see how images is like a key like that so the way that Ruby works is it kind of handles things differently like it'll handle these as just arguments but it'll handle this as a keyword parameter and then you can't really put any more arguments after you do a keyword parameter so that's why you have to do it first so we're gonna put bathrooms bedrooms and then also people limit and then we can just go ahead and bring this onto a new line it's getting pretty long all right and just like that now we can go and update our bedroom so let's say it's five bath or five bedrooms three bathrooms and you can host six people update listing you'll see it's just like that it saves now obviously our images got deleted and that's just a problem with the form <coughs> So the way that the form is working right now is we have this basic file field, which nobody really uses basic file fields because they're annoying like this. And it, it turns out it doesn't really save the images because, yeah, because when you submit the form again and you didn't have anything selected, it just like resets all the images and gets rid of them. So that's really annoying. And I'm gonna get to that in one second, but first let's display those new attributes like the bathrooms, bedrooms, and people limit. Let's go ahead back to the show page and let's put it right underneath the description. And for this, I actually want to do like some cool UI for this. So let's do a div. Let's do grid calls three, gap eight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add like this little card pop up so we can give it a shadow. Maybe have like a little bit of a light background. And then I think I'm gonna use icons to make it more like flashy. So to get some free icons, I'm going to go to Hero Icons, which is actually made by the creators of Tailwind CSS. And let's see if they have anything for bed. They don't. <laughs> Soilet. <clears throat> like for bathrooms? No. Nope. People. User. Okay, so they... This is... Well, this is good. It doesn't have, like, specific icons that I want. Which is annoying. So you can either use Font Awesome. If you're really getting serious about this, you can use Font Awesome. Although it's kind of annoying to set up sometimes, but it's easy to style enough. And also another thing to notice is that most of the good icons are all pro and you have to pay like a hundred bucks a year to use them. And see, I don't like this because it kind of just signifies two genders, which to me is kind of wrong. I would rather just use a toilet. Oh, they do have toilet. Okay, let's see how can we install Font Awesome real quick because I do want to use this. Uh, let's put this in. Font Awesome Toilet. If we try to do that right now, you'll see there's no toilet. Uh, but we can underneath we can display listing dot bathrooms, and it'll show you the number. So see, it shows up as three. Uh, but there's no toilet icon. Also, it's like right close to here. Let me. Add some space between the description. We can use a break or we could just do like margin. It might honestly be better to do margin just so we can do a little bit more of it. Margin top eight. And then let's say we want our container to be like height 40 so it's a little bit bigger like that. And then we can also do flex, flex call item center. So we can stack up the elements, put it in center. Oh, I also want to center it uh, vertically push it down a little bit like that and then we can make that text bigger too I'm gonna wrap our text or our number in this thing and then I'll do I'll wrap it in a spin and I'll add some styling something like that for three and right now you like you don't really know what's going on because we would need to add the icon to make it more appealing so let's try to set up font awesome real quick I'm just going to look it up, how to install Font Awesome. Looks like it already has a doc for it. <coughs> Add the Font Awesome Ruby gem to your gem file. Free. I need to use the free version. Font Awesome SAS. The only problem is I don't use SAS. I don't use SCSS. Although, can we just, can we use it easily enough? I'm pretty sure SCSS needs a bundling step. Oh, so 
some guy's article, install it using import maps. Let's try to do this. Without Node.js. Okay, perfect. And he even has a YouTube video. Nice. Let's do import map pin for awesome. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go into the terminal. I'll just run a nice like that. Okay, so we should have it. Now we need to change the last file name. Wait, why? He's saying change it to all, all JS instead of just font awesome JS. Okay, maybe that'll add some things that are needed for our app. I'm not sure, but I'll do what he says. So let's go to config, import map.rb, and well, actually, there's <laughs> it doesn't even look the same as what he has. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it. I don't know if that's important because it looks like my code's different anyways. But it says include font awesome in our project. So in application JS, we need to import font awesome. So in this file, app JavaScript application JS, which we do have one of those. So if we come to app JavaScript, we do have an application JS where we're importing a lot of the other things that we're using, like hotwire, tricks, action text. So we're also going to import font awesome. And wow, it looks like just like that you could start using it. No way. So let's make sure that we go back into the terminal, start the server again. And I'm going to reload and see if it's working, <laughs> which it's not working. At least I don't see it working. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, there's just nothing there. Let's check console. There's no logs or anything. Hmm. Well, awesome free. Okay, I have an idea. Maybe it's maybe we're requiring the wrong file because we're using the free version. Let me check the config import map. No, it is using free. Oh, awesome free. Import maps. Oh, awesome is not working. We need to pin all of them wow okay fine i'll try it saying i need to import like three or four libraries so i guess i'll delete the one that i have right now and then just run this command which is it's pinning font awesome free font awesome svg core free brands icons like so much stuff okay geez that's a lot and then he says then your application JS you need to add all of this Wow see I didn't know we need to do that much work <laughs> so this like that's kind of insane but let's see that it might work start the server with bin slash dev reload and look at that it works okay I'll give you a thumbs up I guess I need to sign in to do that I'll give you a thumbs up Oh yeah, nice. Hey, it looks like I helped somebody. Sweet. But this guy actually helped me. He's a legend. Now let's try to style this toilet so that it looks better. So let's go back to the listing show page. All right, so we have this toilet here. And I think to make it bigger, we do FA2X. Oh yeah, we made it a little bit bigger. And I want to style it for sure. like. Maybe we style it by using just like the same way we'd style text. Text gray 500. And I don't really know what's going to make it look better. So I wonder if we can do 3x because I want it to be like pretty big. It looks like I can. Yeah, I don't want it to be that dark though. This is kind of tricky. What, te what color should I make it? I guess that's fine, right? I don't know what would look better. Alright, let's add. Let's at least add rounded on this box. Because right now it just looks too square. Three. Okay, maybe 2x. And then I want to make this text bigger. Like 
that is. <laughs> it looks pretty bad. I don't know how to... I mean, I should know how to make it look better because I am the senior developer. So we just figured out, like, what will make it... Maybe using the Airbnb red color to kind of make it look like it pops out a little bit. Let's do red. Picture red 600. Maybe we can get an outline too. Instead of solid, we can do FA outline. Mm, no, that's not working. Let me know in the comments what you guys would think. What do you guys think would make this design better? Probably adding some custom font for the number. I just can't seem to figure it out. I'm gonna add semi bold on the number too. Alright, that's a little bit nicer, a little bit like thicker letter. But I just don't like the coloring. Maybe let's delete the BJ Gray 100. I feel like that adds a kind of a gross look. Oh yeah, because see with the shadow it already kind of sticks out. I like that. But I just can't get past the coloring. I don't know. Maybe we'll just leave it black. Okay, fine. You know what? That that actually doesn't look too bad. Now let's look for a bed one. So we do have a bed one, it's just FA-bed, it's usually pretty simple. So what I'll do is I'll copy this container that we have, I'll actually put the beds first. And instead of bathrooms text, we'll do bedrooms, instead of toilet here, we'll do FA beds, we can get the bed icon, let's reload. Oh, this is looking pretty good, so we have beds, bathrooms, and then we're going to do finally the people limit, so I'll copy the div again just the people limit and then we're gonna need an icon of like a person person or like people I think person fine it's probably fine it's just FA person like that reload and yeah this looks pretty good so we have bedrooms bathrooms and people nice we can edit the listing if we wanted to update these things we could 